Christina here and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own collection using your own tech laser. Now the first part of this tutorial is actually going to be showing you my process on the iPad, how you can go about designing your own elements for your collection. Now you don't need to be an artist to actually be doing this, I'm using very very simple doodles and sketches so you can actually do the same if you choose. If you don't want to do that and you'd just rather follow along with the files that you can download from the OMTEC website, that is also perfectly fine. And as an added bonus, I'm actually going to be showing you how you can make your very own mock-ups in your own packaging. So there's going to be two files that are also included along with the SVG for you to actually make the, um, the projects that we're going to be doing. But you can also make your own packaging and mock-ups for your own collections if you so choose. Now, if you are new and starting out and you don't want to get involved with custom packaging because that's a little bit over, that's completely fine. You can also present your products and collections with these cute little gift boxes. You can get them right off Amazon. You can get them from different distributors. Um, but again, one of the benefits of having custom packaging and, you know, mock-ups to present your products is a lot of customers are going to start identifying your name, your logo with your brand. So it just kind of gives for a nice finalized presentation. Again, it's optional, you don't have to do that with this video. And for the packaging files that I will be including with this, you can cut them out by hand, you can use them with an X-Acto, that's what I did. If you have a, a cutter like a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can also set the file up that way. You are going to need to have some type of program that's going to allow you to add your logo and your name. I use Illustrator, but you know, you can use Inkscape, Photoshop, whatever works best for you. So now that I kind of have gone over what we're going to be doing in this video, I think it's time for us to get started. So yeah, uh, let's jump onto the computer and get it going. I do all of my illustrations on my iPad Pro. And again, these are pretty simple doodles. They don't look like much. You don't have to be an artist to really make your own collection. So that is one positive. And once I have my simple doodles, all I'm gonna do is share it as a PSD to my Mac. As we can see, it is waiting. And once I open it up on my Mac, it's going to look like this. And then I'm just going to copy it and bring it into Illustrator. And then I'm going to go over here, click Live Trace, then Expand. And this is actually going to turn it into a vector. As we can see, there are all of our outlines here. Then all I'm going to do is select the white background and delete it. And one of the reasons why I prefer to work in Illustrator over Lightburn right off the bat is because there are often times I want to make some edits. Like for example, this little area here, I want to actually make it separate so this will engrave. And it's just easier for me to edit while I'm in Illustrator because that's the program that I've been using all these years. And then once I'm done making my edits, I'm just going to copy it and paste it right in Lightburn. And it will paste it in as a whole, so I'm going to have to do some ungrouping and delete some of these lines. And let me quickly show you. We zoom into this moon here. That is a separate piece, which is exactly what I want, because we're going to plan on engraving that. And there we go. We have our elements here. Very simple, as you can see. I'm going to make sure that I have my engrave and my cut set correctly. But again, this is just kind of like a quick glimpse into my process. You don't really need to worry about that because this file is actually free. Now in that case, if you're just downloading and working with the file, you can just import it and open up the SVG and it'll look like this. You will need to make sure that the layers are in coordination with what you have in your library. So just, you know, be cautious of that. And what I like to do is I like to organize all of my elements by the material that they're gonna go on. So if it's gonna be, you know, on a mirror gold, I'm gonna keep the mirror gold together. If it's gonna be on iridescent, like the little drops, that's gonna go together. Same with the silver for the silver mirror. And then I'm just gonna drag them off the screen over here. And here we have all of the elements that I'm gonna be doing with the mirror gold. And with mirror, you always wanna make sure that the gray side is up. And again, always make sure you check your focal height, especially if you're working with a bunch of different materials. 
and just something to be cautious of if you're ever making your own collection or your design and you have like a lot of sharp edges it might not cut correctly or you know you're gonna find it's actually hard to pop it out and it'll crack so just be kind of aware of that when working with mirrored acrylic all right now i'm gonna frame it awesome happy with that location and then i'm gonna send the job to the laser And I'm going to repeat the same process with my two other material types. The raindrops are going to be with an iridescent specialty acrylic that I had on hand. And the clouds and the moon is going to be on a silver mirror that I had on hand. And to clean acrylic, all I use is a makeup brush and a little bit of plain water. So you can see it's a little bit powdery, but takes it right off. And I have these, all these different fastenings, these uh, jump hoops in different colors. So that's what I'm gonna be using to go with each set. For the studs and pin, I'm gonna be using Starbond Medium. For the keychain, if you ever have these little holes stuck in, just get one of these little pokey tools. I got mine from the dollar store. This just pops out those little pieces. And I'm just going to attach the jump hoops to the moon and the keychain. I'm going to do the same with the little star. And as an optional piece, I'm adding a yellow tassel. For the dangle earrings, I'm going to be following the same process. I'm going to be using my little jump hoops. And if you do notice fingerprints on your acrylic, you can try some of this stuff. It'll help your acrylic shine. And for the top, I'm going to be using a jump hoop with the little earring hook. And for the moon and the dangly stars, I'm just going to be doing the same thing. What I like about dangle studs is when you wear them, you see the whole facing of the design that you have versus the ones with the hooks. You know, they kind of move around. These ones pretty much stay in place, so I do like to work with them a lot. As you can see, you know, they just kind of move around when you're using the actual hooks versus the studs. Now we have our general collection. And it just kind of goes to show how you have a few simple designs and how you can make various products out of just a few designs. And again, you don't even need to be an artist to do it. You can use a simple sketch or a doodle to make all of this a reality. And as an added bonus, I'm also including some packaging. You will see there is actually an AI file, which is an Illustrator file, and an SVG file. The AI file is editable, so you can change the font and the wording to your own liking and choosing. The SVG is not as editable. You know, you will need to probably open this in a different program, you know, delete the words. And this is what they kind of look like. These are some of the sample ones that I use in my products. Some, you know, if you want to do a little um, hanger, you can add a hanger. If you don't want to, you know, you don't need to do that. And I also really like these little boxes. I get them right off Amazon and I use them for a lot of my mock-ups. I literally just, you know, take a design and kind of paste it in a box and then cut it around so it just fits. And then when you assemble it, you don't have to really worry about seeing the tape and everything. And if you're not really into customization, that's fine. You can also use a plain gift box. And this is what it would look like if it was just a plain gift box. Still kind of gives a really nice clean presentation to your collection. You can see all the different designs and they're displayed nicely.
and this is an example of what it would look like if we were using one of the little mailer boxes. You can actually get this template. It's right in the packaging file, so you can add your own logo and stuff to it. But I really love these. You know, you can change it out. You can, you know, do different ones for holidays. You can do a general all occasion one, you know, be creative and really make it unique to you. I hope this video has been inspirational for you and I hope you've learned a lot. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and have yourself an awesome day.